Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we're going to take a closer look at this MSI motherboard. This is the P67A GD80 motherboard brought to you by MSI and it features the B3 revision chipset. So just to go over some baseline specs for this motherboard, we are featuring the P67 chipset. That's the Cougar Point chipset and again this is the B3 revision. This supports Intel Generation 2 Core i3, i5 and i7 processors also known as Sandy Bridge codename processors. Of course it is compatible with Windows 7 and this motherboard will enable both Crossfire X and NVIDIA SLI technology for use of with multiple video cards. Around here on the back of the box we can see MSI is pointing out a few of the additional features of this motherboard. Uh, they've focused a lot on the quality of components that they're used. So here you can see they have highly conductive polymerized capacitors that they're using. Uh, they also have super ferrite chokes, which feature 30% higher current capacity, and that's to feed power to your CPU. And of course, they have solid capacitors that feature 10 plus years lifespan um, for the capacitors on the board. So these are all the core components that they're using, and they're just showing that they've gone with higher quality of, of components there to make sure that your motherboard has a long lifespan. Of course, down here on the lower left, MSI has the OC Genie 2 software, which is a software-based overclocking you can use once you have your operating system installed. As mentioned on the front of the box, we have three PCI Express 16-speed slots uh, that will support both SLI and Crossfire technology. Finally, over here on the right, there's an instant overclocking button. Uh, there is the supercharger uh, function, so the USB port will stay active, so you can charge items like an MP3 player or a smartphone, even while the computer is off. Uh, MSI has a bit of a pseudo operating system that can allow you to do some basic functions without having to have an operating system installed. And the audio quality is THX True Studio Pro, featured for your audio connectors on the motherboard. So that's about enough for the outside of the box itself. There are some additional items here uh, which are just a little bit more in depth for the items that were on the outside of the box. But let's go ahead and see what all is included. Here is a full color printed quick installation guide which shows you a complete layout of the motherboard and points out all of the different connectors. So very nice to have it full color, to have it a just fold out sheet like this so you can see everything with your board and where all the plugs and different featured items go. Uh, some more information there on the back about the uh, components that are used and some of the other features of the board. And now for accessories. All right, so this looks like one, two, three, four serial ATA. Uh, those are L brackets on one side of either of those serial ATA cables. Uh, we also have two Molex to serial ATA power connectors, so you can use those to connect serial ATA devices um, and supply power to them. Next up, we have a USB, this looks like a USB 3.0 front, or I'm sorry, rear panel bracket. The GD80 does have 10 USB 3.0 ports and several of those are included uh, on the motherboard with a front panel USB 3.0 connector. So you can plug that in and attach that bracket to the back of your computer in one of the PCI Express slots. That will give you two additional USB 3.0 ports. Here we have an MSI multi-GPU SLI video link card. So that's if you're going to use SLI, you want to use that little bracket there. Here is a drivers and utilities disk. Uh, you can use that, or you can go to the MSI website to download the latest versions. Usually best to download the latest versions from the website. Here's another quick installation guide, which is black and white, but it features multiple languages. So if English is not your first language, you should be covered. And here are some additional items that they've added. Hmm. This, oh, I see. This is uh, some voltage check cables, so you can actually attach those to leads on the motherboard to check your voltage, and we'll see if we can clarify that a little bit further on, further later on. Uh, these are headers for USB connections. If your case happens to feature loose USB cables rather than ones that already have the header on it, you can use those to collect them all together. It makes it easier to plug and unplug. Here is your input-output shield for the back of your case. And of course, the full documentation for the motherboard, 
uh, software applications for this one and hardware installation manual there. Make sure to keep that handy while you're doing your motherboard installation because there's important stuff such as where to install your memory in the DIMMs as well as how to connect your front panel to the motherboard. Okay. That is pretty much all that is in the box aside from the motherboard itself and let's take a closer look at that. Alright guys, there is the MSI P67A GD80 motherboard, V3 revision once again, in all of its glory. And uh, let's just sort of start down here at the bottom and I'll try to point out as many of the connector items that I can just by looking at it. So right down here on the bottom right you have your front panel connectors, you also have three USB 2.0 headers, you can route to your USB 2.0 ports on the front of your computer or on the back, depending if you have brackets. Next to that, we have two separate USB 3.0 front panel headers. Nice to have two of those. You could use this bracket for one of them for a couple USB 3.0 ports at the back of the case. And then if you have a case with a USB 3.0 header, you can route that to the front of the case. So um, there's definitely lots and lots of USB 3.0 on this motherboard. Next to that, we see the OC Genie button. OC Genie button, that is MSI's simple one-touch overclocking feature. Next to that we have uh, motherboard mounted power and reset buttons. So great if you're doing out of, the, out of the case testing and setting up the motherboard to have power and reset buttons. It's a lot easier to hit those than to have to uh, short the two pins on the motherboard front panel connectors. Uh, moving right along over here we have a front panel HD audio connector so you can route that to your uh, front panel audio connectors on your case. Uh, over here on this side we can see our THX True Studio uh, capacitors and just generally the THX audio uh, chips that are built in there. Of course those are out right up here to the audio connectors for your rear panel. And as long as we're over here on the rear panel we might as well go over all of our input output connectors on the back. Let me turn this to the side. So it makes it a little bit simpler. So here are all of your audio connectors. Next to that you can see uh, one, two, three, four, actually let's just count all of the USB 3.0. One, two, three, four, five, six. All of these blue connectors are USB 3.0. So that's six right there. Two more available from each of those front panel connectors giving you 10 USB 3.0 ports in total. On top of these two we can see dual uh, Ethernet ports and I believe those are gigabit Ethernet ports. Just a moment while I double check. Okay. Confirmed. These are both controlled by a Realtek RTL8111E Ethernet controller and those are both gigabit, gigabit capable. Next to that we have a couple uh, E SATA ports right there with a couple more USB 2.0 connectors on top. Again the USB 3 as well as Firewire. And we have a component audio out coax. I'm sorry, not, this, is, <laughs> this is a coax audio out and we have an optical audio out. Here is a what is most likely a clear CMOS button right there. And then finally, mouse or keyboard button. <laughs> finally, mouse or keyboard connector as well as a couple more USB 2.0. Alright, let's go back to the front of the motherboard. Moving back up from the bottom. So here under our sticker which is talking about the OC Genie overclocking. We can see our uh, we can see our PCI Express 16 speed slots. These two are separated with three spaces and then the third one has, is double spaced. In between those you have two standard PCI slots and then you have a single speed PCI Express slot right above that. I'm sorry, two PC, single speed PCI Express slots. One is right above the main VGA PCI Express connector. Um, one other unique item that I actually have not seen yet on any motherboards, this right here is a power connector for PCI Express. So if, for example, your uh, power supply does not have the PCI Express connector required, or if you simply want the a bit better voltage control by connecting through the motherboard, you can route that connector there straight up to the PCI Express input on your video card. Next up, down here on the bottom right, this is actually the heat sink for our P67 chipset. Very nice to have a passive heat sink there because chipset fans tend to make a lot of annoying noise. Uh, over here on the right side, we can see our serial ATA connectors. Uh, the white ones here 
our serial ATA revision 3, 6 gigabit per second. The four black ones here are serial ATA revision 2, 3 gigabit per second, and all of those ports are controlled by the P67 chipset. Next up over here, we have our 24-pin power connector uh, scattered around the board in several different places. I can see one here, one here, one here. These are all chassis fan connectors. It looks like we have, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say scattered. They're kind of grouped. We have three chassis fan connectors, three-pin connectors there if you want to plug in your uh, cases chassis fans. Uh, next to that is our memory slots. This is for DDR3 memory. We have four slots. So you can fit up to four DIMMs of DDR3 memory in there. Uh, right above that is our CPU PWN connector to connect your CPU fan. Of course, right here is our 1155 socket. And uh, as always, be very careful when you remove this protective panel and you're installing your CPU into this 1155 socket. Right here above the 1155 socket, we can see the heat spreaders for the voltage regulation units that are supplying power to the CPU. This is a 10 phase, yeah, I'm sorry, 12 phase power design to provide you nice clean voltage to the CPU, have plenty of overclocking headroom there. Uh, next to that, we can see our ATX or EPS connector. This is a four pin or eight pin connector. Uh, if you only have the four pin, you can plug that in but you will be a little bit more limited on the voltage available for CPU overclocking. Of course, if you have a full 8-pin EPS connector, you can plug that in, uh, and that will give you a little bit more juice uh, for overclocking your CPU. And that pretty much wraps it up for the unboxing and overview of this MSI motherboard. Once again, this is the MSI P67A GD80 motherboard featuring the B3 revision of the Cougar Point P67 chipset. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. Thanks for watching today's unboxing and overview. We'll see you next time.